Hello and in this video we're just going to go over customizing text. So whereas in the previous videos we've been kind of building up the uh, the real basis of our knowledge, now I'm going to do a bit of a CSS property dump on you guys because you really need to get your CSS property knowledge up to scratch because obviously we've been working more about the basics and now we can start piling stuff on top of that to make really awesome stuff. So to start off with, this should just be the stuff that we created last lesson or last tutorial. Let me just refresh that. There we go. And essentially the first thing that's on my list, because obviously I can't remember all of the uh, customization properties I want to cover, is the color property. Now obviously we've pretty much already covered this. We do the color keyword and then we set its value to either a hex color or we can give it a value like red like that or we can give it, um, what else, we can give it an RGB value like that or in fact RGBA but let's not go into that. So color, pretty simple. What do we have as before? 666. Uh, very simple, and we already know how to do it, so I'm not going to go over that again. And this comment's wrong, isn't it? Grayish. So the next thing that's really big in customizing text is you're probably going to want to change the font, or the font style, or the font type, or whatever you want to call it. It's essentially the font. Now, in CSS, this is called the font family. So we set the font-family property, and we set that to a value of firstly, the font that in an ideal world you'd want your user to see so if they have this font on their computer use this so if the font has a space in it we can just surround it in single quotes and I want Myriad Pro I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it um, obviously sorry if it's not but that's how I assume it's being pronounced so Myriad Pro in an ideal world if the user has Myriad Pro on the system use Myriad Pro okay what if they don't have Myriad Pro well, this is the point where we do a comma space and we specify the next font to fall back on if they don't have Myriad Pro. So, for example, let's fall back on Helvetica. Oops, like that. So, Myriad Pro if they have it, if not Helvetica. And we should probably specify some more of these in case they don't have Helvetica. So, if they don't have Helvetica, maybe we'll fall back on Arial. And if we don't... Uh, sorry, at, at the end of most of our font families, we're then going to want to specify one of the two most basic fonts. So Arial you think is pretty basic, but even more basic than this, if they don't have Arial, then we're going to fall back on either Serif or Sans Serif. Now, um, it's difficult to explain just over audio what a Serif and Sans Serif font, uh, sorry, what Serif and Sans Serif fonts are, but essentially a Serif font is one with little little bits on which make it look kind of old-fashioned, some would say. And a sans serif, which means without serif, they haven't got these little serif old-fashioned bits on. They're often considered more modern fonts. So I'm going to fall back. Myriad Pro, if they don't have that Helvetica, if they don't have that Arial, if they don't have that sans serif. And we can specify as many of these fallbacks as we want, just with commas like that. So that should work. For the time being, we've set this... Uh, to our body using the body selector so this should just apply to all of it so if we refresh here we go we see now have this nice looking font which I should imagine is my red pro um, so I think I have that on this system let's just go back to sublime for now so font family fairly simple this property and we just specify the fonts that we would ideally like our user to see uh, next let's go on to font size again this is another pretty big thing now we can specify the size in a variety of different units. So first of all, we have point, so you might want 12 PT, or point, 12 point font, and I'm not going to explain what the point unit is. You've probably seen it before in programs like Microsoft Word and other word processors. Uh, so essentially that's that. We can also specify in pixels. Um, pixel size is pretty regular, so maybe we'll want a 18 pixel font. Uh, and we can also specify in the relative units of M's. Now, essentially, 1M, E-M, is uh, how you write an M is the way I'm using it in this context. Um, 1M is the default browser font size. And obviously then, 2M's is double that size. So if 10 pixel font is the default for your browser, 2M's is going to be a 20 pixel font. And 1M is obviously going to be a 10 pixel font. Now this is useful, because let's just say like on the iPhone, I don't know if this is necessarily true, but I'm imagining it probably is. On the iPhone, they could set their default font to something which is easily legible on the iPhone. So then what we can do in our style sheets is we can say, okay, we want it a bit bigger than whatever their default font is, so we want 1.2 M's. 
So M's are a really useful measurement, and I usually specify my font size in M's, uh, even though I've only started doing it recently, so I, I don't really have a great idea of how big that's going to be. Uh, I think that should probably be around what I want it to be. So font size, in fact, of course, we need to preview this first. So, oh, yep, yeah, that's pretty big, um, ready for regular body text, but since this is obviously just an example, uh, in fact, what we should do, let's go back to index, um, and let's, let's remove this strong, we don't really need... Is that how I did it? Yeah, now I've just used a little text expander shortcut I have there, and let's just remove those lines. Now what this does is, this pretty simply creates some text for us. And this is filler text. The text that's generally used with web designers is this lorem ipsum dolorsit amet. I don't know if I've, I've probably pronounced that all wrong. People are cringing at my pronunciation. But pretty much, it's not actually Latin as much as it looks Latin, and it's used for filler text uh, throughout the uh, the general web design community. You can Google, obviously, lorem ipsum if you want to know a little bit more about that, because there is some history behind it. And then, let's just save that for now and do a refresh and see how that looks and that's pretty much what I want it to look like so that's all good anyway that I've just done that to help us see obviously then the different stylings when we change things so that's that's what we've got it looking like at the moment so we sent our font, fam font family rather font size and let's set our line height next which is the real reason I made the change because you wouldn't have been able to see the line height very well so, line height is basically the space between the lines. Now, again, I like specifying this in M's. You can also specify it in pixels and probably a bunch of other measurements as well. So, let's just say uh, 1.2 M's. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, is 1.2 the default? Maybe 1.2 is the default. Yeah, there we go. So, I've hit to 1.5 and you can see there's now more space between the lines. And I can set it to something even more, like 2. And there's even more space between the lines. Now, often getting the right line height uh, for a body of text is really, really important in web design. Um, because you really need to allow space for the text to breathe, which sounds really weird. But if you have a really nice... This, well, uh, 2 is probably too much. But if you have a really, really nice looking website and the line height isn't enough, it just looks really squished together. So if we set this to like the extreme of like 0.8 m's. Yeah, we can see that it looks really horrible and bunched together. I mean, maybe the color and the font and everything else is exactly perfect for you, but if the line height isn't right, that's going to look pretty damn horrible. So let's just set it to 1.4. Let's give it a bit of breathing space. Yeah, that's good. So line height, that's what that does. And just as a quick little note, uh, if we just set this to like one line like that, then if you set the line height of something... Oh, this is a really bad example. I just realized I can't actually warrant this. But I guess I should try and cover it. Pretty much, if you have a section which is a certain height, so let's just say that between here and the top of the page was a fixed height, which we don't really know how to do yet, so I probably shouldn't be covering this, but I am anyway. If that was, let's say, uh, 20 pixels, then what we could do, if we then set the line height of this line of text to 20 pixels, it will be exactly centered vertically inside that fixed um, fixed thing for obvious reasons but anywho let's relate the page since we now put all that text back in that's line height for you now font family font size and line height can actually can be combined into one really nice property which is just the shorthand font property we just type font and then we can put in our font size which we had as 1.2 m's and then we do forward slash our line height so we had that as 1.4 m's and then space our font family, so I guess it's going to be easier just to copy these over. And we can then remove all these lines that we've created before. And that's now a whole lot neater and nicer in the CSS file and does exactly the same thing. As you can see by reloading the page, it hasn't made a difference. So that's a really nice way of doing that, and I, I would like using that and would use that preferably if you can. Now the next thing we're going to do is a bit about alignment. So we're going to go text align. Center is one of the simplest uh, values you can set it to. So if we do that, you can see, aha, uh -huh, it's now centered. And then we obviously have, if we want to align it to right, don't worry about the noise, then everything's aligned right. And obviously if we want to align it left, then we can align it left. And I'm, I honestly can't remember if there's something like the justify feature in Word. I'm presuming there is. 
yeah. So we can set it to justify as well. Which, hmm, I can't really think of a, a great thing right now if we just hit this really quickly. I don't think I've told you about the width property. But if we just hit that, the body width 300 pixels, we can see everything's now spaced out so it actually fits nicely on all the lines rather than being like all hyphenated and ugly and horrible. So that's what justify does. But anyway, I don't think I've taught you about width, so let's just forget that ever happened. And I said to center for the, the purposes of this simple page. And that's looking a lot better, actually. It's, it's kind of a really basic web page. So text align, very, very, very useful. Next of all, I hate rushing through all these properties. Hopefully, you know, if you don't actually get all of these by the end, you can rewatch this video or just play around with them yourself, and that's really going to help enforce it to you. So you have text decoration. And really the most common things for these are going to be overline. Well, overline probably isn't going to be that common. That's going to basically just set a weird overline to everything. Obviously, underline. It's going to be underlined. And, of course, none. Like that. I know quite commonly text decoration none is used in links, because some people don't like having their links with underlines on, so they might have their regular anchor tags have text decoration of none, and then when you hover over their anchor tags, they might then want a text decoration of underline. So if we just see what that looks like, you can tell this is a link because of its color, and then we hover, we get confirmation by the change of color and the underline. So some people like that. And I guess I quite like that effect, but I don't know, I like underline as well. Maybe on hover, I'll remove the underline. Yeah, I think that's pretty obvious. We'll keep it like that. So when you hover over a link, then the underline goes away just to kind of give you more confirmation that you're actually hovering over a link. It's kind of like a user experience thing. And then the last thing we're going to go over today is the uh, text transform. Sorry, I couldn't read the writing on my note for a while there. So let's say in all of our ULs, or on all the lists, we want to set the text transform property to uppercase. We can now see these are all in uppercase, simple as. Or we can set it to lowercase, like that. And I think there's probably a property for alternate. No, there's not. Uh, what's it called? There's a property. Um, Sorry, not property, there's a value to it where you can set the start of every word to be a capital, but I like, honestly, for the life of me, can't remember what it is. In fact, let me just quickly pause this video and check that out for you. Okay, I found it. Um, it's pretty simple. It's capitalize, like that. And that's going to just capitalize the start of every word. And that's quite a nice setting to it as well. I don't use it often, as you can obviously see by me not knowing what the hell it was. But uppercase, lowercase, and capitalize. I guess, for the sakes of this, we'll... I guess lists in capitalizing isn't too weird. Some people like their links um, text transformed to upper case. I always want to just write upper for some reason. I don't know. I think that's quite good for navigation bar links at the moment on devhq.net, my website. The navigation links are all in uppercase and it looks nice on my nav bar. I guess it doesn't really look very nice in this situation. I guess let's use capitalize in the UL. That looks pretty nice. So this is our finished web page for this um, for this tutorial, I guess. Let's just go over this once again. We've set our color to 666. Then we've set our font size to 1.2 M's. Which remember, 1 M is the default browser font size. And then we have our line height, which is the space between the lines, and which we've set to 1.4 M's. Then we have our font family, which we've set Myriad Pro, if not fall back on Helvetica, if not fall back on Arial, if not fall back on Sans Serif. Then we've set our text to align to center of the page. Remember, we can also have left, right, and justify. And then we have our text decoration, which when we hover over our links, we've set to none, because we don't want it to have an underline like it would by default. And we've also used our text transform property to transform the text. So the start of every word is capitalized in our unordered lists. So, again, that is a bit of a property dump, but hopefully you should feel like you've learned a lot more, and these are obviously a lot of properties you can then play around with on your own web pages. I almost dropped my notes there, and it would have made a loud noise. Luckily, I stopped them. But there are a lot of things you can play around with, and I really do recommend create your own test page. Play around with different justifications and different, you know, font sizes and using different units, such as, you know, M's, pixels, point fonts, 
and all that stuff. If you play around with it, it will not only enforce it in your mind, but it's actually really good just to kind of explore different things and, and try new things. So that's the end of this lesson or tutorial, and have a nice day.